It's 2023. Google Research have brought out Muse, a new text to image model. 460 million text to image pairs from Google Imagine, and they're using the T5XXL 4.6 billion parameter model. Welcome to the very first major model released for 2023, released last night, California time at about 8 p.m. I'm uh, on the west coast of US right now and I was waiting. We only had to wait about 48 hours and we got the very first model released by the amazing guys there at Google Research. This is a fun one. Let's get straight into it to see what it can do and what's different in what it can do compared to some of the other models. Here's our first prompt. Three elephants standing on top of each other. Now this is a spatial prompt and a cardinal prompt. And Google Muse does really well. I'm sure you've never seen something like that before. Three elephants stacked. What about four wine bottles? Some models like Stable Diffusion have difficulty with this. Dolly 2 has difficulty with this. But you can see here, Google Muse is really good with using Transformer to translate the prompt and spit out a beautiful result. What about this one? A tiny football in front of three yellow tennis balls. Another number, another spatial. Three small yellow boxes on a large blue box. I had difficulty with something like this recently, even with Mid Journey version four, but it looks like Google Muse does really, really well with that. Here's a large present with a red ribbon to the left of a Christmas tree. Just in terms of composition, this is much more useful to translate these prompts into the real world. Two baseballs to the left of three tennis balls. That's exactly what we asked for. It also does spectacularly with text rendering, unlike models like Dolly. Let's try a t-shirt with Carpe Diem written on it. Looks pretty good to me. A high contrast image of the word wombat written with thick colored graffiti letters on a white wall with dramatic splashes of paint. You're looking at 512 by 512 images, not extremely high resolution, but we can upscale these later. The saying, be excellent to each other, written in a stained glass window. I like getting these text to image models playing around with stained glass, it's kind of cool. Just some of the examples of what it already does amazingly. Now, how is this model different to Google Party, Google Imagine, uh, Google Fanaki, and the other range of models that we've seen? So for the last, say 12 to 24 months, we've focused on autoregressive models, which are essentially feed forward. They're looking at what should come next and then predicting it in a line. And diffusion models, which are basically adding noise to an image and then trying to work out what went inside of that via that Gaussian noise. Diffusion is the most popular one now because it's absolutely beautiful. Stable Diffusion, of course, is Diffusion. Uh, we've moved Dolly 2 from autoregressive to Diffusion, so it's very popular, but Google decided to try sitting with VQGAN, a very old technology comparatively for AI, and going back to this entire concept of the Transformer architecture. You remember that Transformer came to us in 2017 while the Google team were investigating how to solve translation. Here's my list from my mid-year report of the different types of text-to-image models, starting with Dolly 1 back in January 2021, so that's now two years old. They moved there from autoregressive to diffusion when they gave us Dolly 2 in April of last year. And of course, you'll see some different examples of switching between diffusion and autoregressive, sometimes for competition reasons to see what's possible. But in this one, we're essentially back to a GAN. They haven't used Lion Aesthetic or Lion 5B here. They've used the Google Imagine dataset 
nearly cut in half to 460 million text image pairs. And you'll see it compares kind of favorably. It's just smaller than Dolly 2 for its test training data. We won't go too deeply into how it works, but this is what the flow looks like. It takes a prompt, like a cat looking at a dog, encodes that text into an embedding, then feeds in an input image, tokenizes that, masks some of the tokens, reconstructs those, and then moving down, you've got the 512 by 512 input image, which is twice the size. It also masks the high-res tokens in here, joins them together and reconstructs those in parallel. This is a traditional use of the transform model and it is essentially completing tokens just like we do in a large language model, but this is a vision. It's also a lot faster. So when we're generating a 512 by 512 image, Stable Diffusion, the previous version, took 18 and a half seconds Google Muse is doing it in 1.3 seconds. It's going to be super fast. Here's a real example of that. This is an original pencil drawing here of what looks like a cat. Then we can click on a cat wearing a tie and in 1.3 seconds it will choose the next tokens there and generate that image. A dog, a pig, a Shiba Inu, a classic here of testing text to image models, a rabbit, a raccoon, a tiger, and an owl. With this kind of speed of generation of images, I'm hoping that someone can help me out with my monitor back in Australia that's behind me with listening to my voice and live generating images, almost generating video in real time. So as I speak, it's picking up keywords drafting a prompt and in one and a half seconds, generating that image. Wouldn't that be really, really cool? I haven't seen that done in a big way yet. There are a couple of people that have generated uh, videos of doing that using stable diffusion, but it still takes a little while. It's 18 and a half seconds versus one second. Here's some more examples. These are some of my favorites from the paper and from the GitHub site. A tilt shift macro shot of a tiny Christmas town. Rainbow colored penguin. He's pretty cute. There's comparisons of this and Stable Diffusion and Dolly 2 in the paper if you'd like to see that. A striking photo of a lighthouse at sunset. Manhattan skyline made out of bread. Arguably made out of cheese. The first time I looked at it, I thought that one was made out of cheese. I love some of the unique prompts they come up with to prove that the image has never existed before. A surrealist painting of a robot making coffee. Definitely hasn't existed before. A bear riding a bicycle with a bird perched on the handlebars. You'll notice these are not as beautiful as Stable Diffusion 1.5 or Mid Journey version 4. A ballet dancer made from rope. Great example of an image that doesn't exist and yet it's using the pixels it knows about from seeing 460 million images to conceptualize something brand new. A close up, sharp photo of a pink flower. They use some of the party prompts here for testing. So they use the research by Google Research from Google Party to use that standardized set of prompts. A cat and a dog, Canon camera, 10 mil lens. I love how it can conceptualize even the film stock and the type of kit, the type of lens. A photo of a panda doing yoga on a yoga mat. That would be pretty scary to look out your back door and see. The New York skyline with the Great Pyramid in the foreground and Mount Everest in the background. 
that would also be quite scary to look out your back door and see. Wonderful conceptualization here and a really good demonstration if you want to show your parents or if you want to show someone who's never seen text image models before. And here's our last one, an abstract flowery painting. Models like Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion are fantastic for generating new art that you can then go and print onto a real canvas. This is an exciting model. I know that maybe you think the images don't look as good as Google Imagine or Mid Journey is still my favorite model, but it is bringing us something new. It's going back to VQGAN in a way and adding more emphasis to the transformer. They're using T5 extra extra large, T5 XXL with 4.6 billion parameters to take in the prompt and then generate from there to play around with embeddings with transformer rather than allowing this noising, denoising or this auto regression. It can do that in parallel. They reckon that gives it amazing zero shot editing capabilities. So for the first time in painting, out painting and messing around with the image is built into this. Congratulations to the Google research team behind Google Muse. I think this is gonna be a groundbreaking start to the year. It'll have some AI labs second guessing their approach to using diffusion and then bolting on different capabilities like in painting and out painting and adding masks. Uh, and it will really set the stage maybe to go back to GANs and to add this more solid transformer. Of course, you can compare this to the beauty and the elegance of diffusion models but I think it's always fun going back to the transformer ar architecture, which I think will set the stage for artificial general intelligence, certainly for prototypical AGI. And that is potentially this year. We had Gato last year. I think we're gonna get something crazy in January, 2023. Just a few days ago, I released the latest edition of the memo. We talked about some really cool things. One of them was the fact that the newest GPT 3.5 from November 2022 is essentially passing IQ tests and outdoing, outperforming humans in quite a big way. It's able to do the Raven's progressive matrices, which is something I used to work with while I was serving as chairman of Mensa for the Gifted Families Committee there. We talked about OpenAI's investment in four new companies. We looked at GPT-3 being used to detect dementia in voice samples. We looked at MedPalm 540B, which is outperforming surgeons in clinical diagnoses, makes less errors. A beautiful look at my favorite text to image model, Mid Journey version 4. There's Harry Potter there as a toddler being used for UX and much more. Join me and so many more people, including the big labs, with the memo, and I'll see you next time. Did you see? the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.